whether it's like type. Uh, we have explored the attributes like type, value, placeholder. Okay, uh, this were the attributes, right? What we have explored in the last session. Okay, and we have seen uh, related to type, uh, there are different values that we can configure. We can configure text, uh, we can configure password, we can configure button. Uh, these are three values that we have learned related to the type attribute. Okay, so apart from this, apart from this, you can configure a lot of values, like you can configure email, you can configure tell, you can configure color, Okay, you can configure date. Okay, you can configure range. Okay, like this, we can configure lot of different values to this type attribute. Lot of different values to this type attribute. So let's see, uh, like what are the different values that we can configure for this type value. Okay, so let's come back here. Apart from this, we have something like radio checkbox. Okay, like this way, there are so many values that we can configure for this type attribute. And if you configure different values, a uh, different kind of text boxes will be created. For example, if you want to create one email text box, email text box means you want to create a text box where you want user to enter only email ID. Instead of email ID, if he is entering any some other data, like he is entering only name, then he should get warning like uh, don't enter name, you have to enter the email ID. Okay, we want to create a text box where we want to take only email ID from the user. User should enter only email ID. So if you want a text box where only email ID should be entered, then in that case, the type value, type value you have to assign as an email. So if I go back here, like if I create one container, okay, here simply I will say that type value as email. Here, type value should be email. Now, let me remove this value attribute. Now, here simply I will add placeholder. Something like enter email ID. Enter email ID. And here simply I will say something like submit. Okay. One text box will be created and one button will be created. Now, if I go back to my browser, now these are the uh, input elements which we have created in the last session. Today, we are creating this input type equals to email. So here we are asking user to enter only email ID. Suppose if I enter only here some name like this Sagar. Okay. And if I click on this button, if I click on this button, are you seeing, are you finding anything here? Are you finding any difference here? Are you finding any message? See here, you got, please include an add the rate in the email address. Sagar is missing an add the rate. You are getting one suggestion, right? Now, why we are getting this suggestion? Because of that type value equals to email. So basically here, your browser is expecting user to enter some email ID. But instead of entering email ID, what we have entered, we have entered only normal name. Now, if I enter anything like an email ID, then I won't get that error. Now I won't get that error. I won't get that message also. So like this, you can create a text box where you can allow user to enter only email ID. In the same way, I can create a text box where I can allow user to enter only number. I don't want, I don't want to allow a user to enter any kind of alphabet. So if you want something like this, so for that, what I will do, simply type value, I will give as a number. And here I will ask user to enter only phone number. So if I go back here, now see here, I can enter only numbers. I cannot enter any text here. See, if I'm trying to enter any alphabets, I'm not able to enter. Only numbers I can enter here. Only numbers I can enter. Only numbers I can enter. I cannot enter any alphabet here. 
I'm trying to enter some alphabet. I'm not able to enter. So why now? Because the type input type is number. So we are telling that inside this input box, only number should be allowed. But there is one problem in this input. Actually, this is not a problem. That is one concept. Now, if I type E character, now E character is allowed. Now see here E character is allowed. Just now I said in this text box, we can enter only numbers, but here I am typing E, but E character is allowed. Apart from E, any other character is not allowed. Apart from E, any other character is not allowed. I am typing A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, nothing is allowed. J, X, C, V, B, N, M, nothing is allowed. Only E is allowed. Now you guys have to find the answer. Why? E is allowed in input box whose type is whose type is number. So I want you guys to find out the answer for this. Why E character is allowed? Apart from E, it will not allow any other character. Only E is allowed. Now the question is why E is allowed? And this is one of the very famous interview question. Very, very famous interview question. Okay. I'm pretty sure that whenever you guys search for this answer for this question, you will learn so many things. You will learn so many things. So I want you guys to search for this answer after the class and find out why E is allowed in the input box whose type is number, whose type is number. Okay. There might be a lot of people who already know the answer. Nice. So a lot of people are able to reply. Yeah, but still there are some people who are very new. So they might get confused why E is allowed, why not any other alphabets are allowed. So if you just go and research, then you will understand why E is allowed. Okay. Yeah. So when I was pressure, when I was pressure, like uh, when I was learning HTML, no one taught me that E will be allowed in this number text box. Then when I got the job, I was just working and uh, suddenly I was developing this number type. There I typed E. Now I got confused. Now why E is allowed? Now at that time, I know that uh, if this particular code goes to the test testing team, they will raise the bug. They will raise the bug because testing team also don't have that much idea, right? So what they will do as per test engineer, only number should be allowed in this text box. So what they will do, they will try to add all the characters. Suddenly E will be, he will test E. Now E is allowed. Now what that test engineer will do, he will raise the bug. He will say there is an issue with this text box. As per requirement, this text box should allow only numbers, but here E is allowed. Then that issue will come to the developer. And if you don't know the reason, then you will just fall into that trap and you will start resolving this issue but you cannot resolve this issue right because e should be allowed e should be allowed there is a uh, it makes sense to allow e why it makes sense to allow e for that you need to research about it why e is allowed then you will understand why e should be allowed in the number type input box Uh, Tushar, I will connect with you uh, afterwards. Uh, we will check why, what was the, your issue, right? Okay. Now, this is how we create the number type. Uh, in the same way, you can add type value as color also. Okay. Here, I am just adding color. I am adding type value as a color. Okay, here we don't require placeholder. So let me remove it. Now, if I add type value as a color, now just check here. You got something like this. Now, if I click on this, I got here some color box. Now, here I can select any color. 
Now see here, these color values are selected using this RGB formula. If you remember, we have learned about RGB, red, green, blue. Here, red in uh, intensity is 142, green intensity is 31, blue intent is, uh, intensity is 31. So by combining all these three colors, this color has formed. So like this, you can create one color kind of box where you, you can allow user to select any color. Like he can just move this control. He can select any color. So like this input type, we can create something called color as well. Okay. In the same way. So I will just copy this part. I will just go on the top. Yeah. Here I will add one more container. Uh, this time type value I will give as a date. If I give type value as a date, just check here. On the top, here type, right? Here date, here I have to make it date. Input type, type value as a date. If I give the date, now here it will create date kind of text box where it will allow me to select the date. Now see here I can select the dates. So date text box will be created. In the same way, you can create something called time. Now see here timer is created. You can select some time. So time text box also you can create. Okay, so like this, we have so many values. Now, if I just show all the values, it will just waste your time. Okay, so I hope you guys understood the concept, right? Uh, we can give different values for our type attribute. Text, password, button, email, color, date. Okay, like this, we have so many values. We will see this radio button and checkbox also. So let me show that. If I want to create radio buttons. I can create here radio buttons to create radio buttons. We have to just give type value as a radio. That's it. And here I can just add something called mail. If I go back to my browser, now see one mail radio button is created. In the same way, I can create one more input element to create female radio button. Now see here we got female radio button. So like this, you can create any number of radio buttons. This is male. This is female. Now tell me if you create two radio buttons, if you create two radio buttons, do you want to allow both the radio buttons to be checked like this? Do you want to allow both the radio buttons to, uh, to be selected like this, or you want to select any one? Okay. If you want to select any one, if you want to select any one in that case, what we need to do means to both this input element, we have to configure one more attribute that is name. So what is name name is one more attribute, which will allow us to give some name to our input element. It will allow us to give some name to input element. Apart from this, this name attribute will help us to send our input data to the server. Whenever you are sending your input data to the server at that time, this name attribute will be very, very helpful. So this name attribute are going to act as a key for your data. It will act like a key for your data. So whenever you are taking multiple radio buttons and if you want any one radio button should be selected. In that case, to all the radio buttons, you have to configure this name attribute with the same value. 
for all the radio buttons you have to configure name attribute with the same value remember with the same value only for radio buttons now see here there are two radio buttons and for both the radio buttons i have configured name attribute and the value of that name attribute is same so if you give same name attribute then this both the radio buttons will be considered will be considered as a one container and in that one container you can select any one radio button they will be considered as a one group not container one group and in that group you can select only one radio button now if i go back here now if i select male male, male is selected if i select female male will be unselected and may a female will be selected Again, if I select male, then female will be unselected, male will be selected. Now, when you will get this kind of functionality, if you assign name attribute with the same value, if you assign different values, suppose here I'm saying gender one, here the name value is gender, here the name value is gender one. Now we have two different values for the name attribute. In that case, both the values will be selected. Both the values are selected. So if you want any one value should be selected, then you have to give the same value. Suppose if you have one more, let's suppose we have one more radio button, something like others. In this case also name, at, we should have the name attribute with the same values. So all these three are considered as a one group. Now I can select any one. Okay. So basically we create radio button to select any one option among multiple options. Whenever you want to give multiple options to the user and you want user to select only one option, then we go for radio buttons. If you want to allow user to select multiple options then we go for something called check boxes so here we create something called check boxes so type value should be check box here check box and whenever you are using check box your name value should be unique name value should be unique here i am just giving something like html here CSS, here JavaScript, here also something like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, now here I am entering the checkbox, or here also I am entering the checkbox. Now, if you give type value as a checkbox, then it will create a checkboxes. Now, see checkboxes are created. Now, you can select multiple checkboxes. So, checkboxes are created to select multiple options. Okay. So name attribute are just to give the name for your input element. Like how many humans uh, in our India, how many male candidates we have? So in our class, how many male students are there? There are so many male students, right? Now to all these male students, I want to give some name. For this student, I want to give the name something like Sachin. I hope everybody knows that uh, Sachin name became very popular these days. Uh, everybody knows why Sachin name became very popular. Uh, in case if you guys are following Instagram or news, then you might know. Yes. Now, let's suppose I have a lot of four male students. I have four female students. Now for all the female students, 
I just want to add some name. So maybe my first male student name is Sachin and second, uh, my first female student name should be, it should be, it should be Seema, right? Yeah. Okay. So I hope you guys know the news about it, right? So like this, if I have multiple male students, can I give the name for all the male students? Can I assign name for all the female students? So in the same way, in my form, if I have multiple input elements, if I have multiple input element, so can I assign all these input elements? So can I assign name for all the input elements? Yeah. Is there possibility? Is there possibility that uh, out of four male students, there might be two students with the same name? Is it possibility? Yeah, same concept is applied here also. Same concept is applied here also. Okay. Now suppose I want to call, I want to call Sachin. So can I take their names? Can I call Sachin for an interview? If I want to call Sachin for interview, can I call? Or should I call Seema for interview? Yeah. So it means if I want to refer this candidate, if I want to refer this candidate or if I want to refer this candidate, then I have to take their names, right? So in the same way, whenever you want to refer this input elements, we are going to refer this input elements using JavaScript, using their name attribute. Okay. We, we can refer this input element using this name attribute. Okay. Class class attribute is like a category. Now, can I say this student belongs to UI session, uh, UI classes, or I can say UI course. This student also belongs to UI course plus Java course. Is there any possibility that even Seema belongs to UI course plus Java course. Yeah. So they belongs to same classes, right? So this Sachin and this Seema belongs to same classes, UI Java, UI Java. So the same thing like a class concept. So class refers to some category, some group where both the input element might belongs to same group. They might belongs to same group. So class attribute always refers to group ID value. ID attribute refers to uniqueness of that particular element. Name attribute refers to the name of that particular element, name of name of that particular element.
yeah guys uh, is my screen audio uh, screen is visible and my voice audible yeah. i think i just got uh, disconnected yeah okay so this is about your name uh, id and class Now see here, I'm able to create these checkboxes now. So how to create checkbox? Just we have to add a type value as a checkbox. That's it. Can we create autocomplete, autocomplete input? Can we create autocomplete input? Autocomplete input means I want something like this. I want one text box if i enter here character yes then i should get some suggestion here i should get some suggestion i should get here some suggestion of words which starts with yes maybe something like this Okay. Now, if I just enter here, yes, A, then I should get the suggestion of words only which starts with yes, A. It means this Sachin should not be visible. Okay. So if you want to get this kind of autocomplete, autocomplete input box. Then for that, we can go with another element that is data list element, something called data list. Okay. So for this, what we will do first, we will create one input box. Then we will create one data list component. then we will integrate this data list with this input box okay so first we have to create one input box then we have to create one data list then we have to integrate this data list with this input box so let's see how we can do so here i am just creating one container creating one input box creating one data list. So to create data list, we have to take data list tag. In that data list tag, we have to take option tag. It can be self closing tag or it can be opening tag and closing tag. And to this option tag, we can configure one attribute called value. And here we can configure some value. For example, here I'm configuring Sagar and like this, I'm configuring multiple values. So maybe here something like Sachin, uh, here maybe something like uh, Sid, uh, here maybe something like Sneha. Okay, maybe I will just configure two more options. Okay, here something like Rutuja and here uh, maybe something like Zia. Okay, I have just configured some options inside my data list. Remember in this opening tag and closing tag, I am not adding any content. Just one option tag in that I have taken one value attribute. Now, if I go back to my browser, it created something like this, some input box. Now my requirement is if I type yes here, I should get here a suggestion of all the words which are starting with yes. And that suggestion should come from these options. Whatever options you have configured, only that suggestion should come. Okay, so for that, what we are going to do, this data list, we will integrate with this input element. How to integrate? For this data list, we will assign some ID. 
something like my list give some value like i am giving my list whatever value you want you can give and in this input element we will take one more attribute called list and the value of this list should be the id should be the id value of data list so here i will provide my list so like this we are going to integrate this input element and this data list whatever id you will assign to data list that should be the value of this list attribute now if i go and search here now see i got all the suggestions if i just keep my cursor if i search s i got all that all the words which starts with s if i say ye i got only two uh, suggestions which starts with s i can select any one now this is called auto complete auto complete feature no need to type entire word just if you type yeah if you just type yes you will get the suggestion you can select here in the same way if i type z i got zia no need to type entire zia only i can type z and then i will get suggestion i can select it same thing like in your google right in google.com i think we have that if i type here r i got so many suggestions here which starts with r okay this is your auto complete auto complete i can select here react so same thing here we are able to do okay so what we need to do simply we have to take input element we have to take one data list in that data list we have to configure multiple options to this data list we have to configure one id whatever value you will give whatever value you will give here that value you have to assign it suppose here i am giving some different like list one now will i get that suggestion will i get here my suggestion now i won't get that suggestion right why why i am not getting suggestion because here this list value and your id values are different your id value is list 1 and your list attribute value is my list so both are different that is the reason they are not integrated so here it should be my list only okay now using data list we can create auto complete feature in the same way we can create something called drop down so are you guys aware about drop down now see here i got drop down now this is drop down see this is drop down all these are drop down so i can create this kind of drop down if i want to create this kind of drop down for that we will take the help of another element that is select element and for that select element we have a tag called select tag and under this select tag we can configure multiple options so for configuring multiple options again we will take here option tag option tag so using this select element or select tag you can create one drop down so if i go back here okay if i create one container okay here it should be select here i will see input and data okay here select element so inside this form simply you have to take one select tag 
in that you have to configure options here html or i will add some city name something like bangalore like this hyderabad maybe pune maybe mumbai maybe gurgaon okay here i can just configure something like cities like mumbai here pune and here hyderabad now one drop down will be selected created see one drop down is created now you can select any option here this is your select element so here we can configure one more option like select a city Now you got here select city. You can select any city now. Okay, this is how we create drop down. Yeah. So already I have added the PDF related to form, guys. You can check it. Okay. Already in that HTML section, I have added uh, PDF related to this form element. So this is how we create the drop down. We can create drop down group also. We have something like uh, we can create some options with the groups. Anybody knows about that? How can we create the groups in this drop down? Like I want to create three groups. And in that three groups, in each group, I want to configure some set of values, some set of options. Okay, so let me just show you that. Okay. Now inside this select, what I need to do, I have to take one opt group, opt group. And for this, I have to give some label, right? Some label, maybe something like I'm giving H uh, programming languages. And inside this opt group, we can configure options. Something like Java. One more option, something like JavaScript. Maybe one more option, something like C sharp. Okay, if I go back here, now see. We got here one heading like programming language. Under that, we got three options. Like this, we can create one more group. Under this select, we can create one more group. And we have to just add label attribute. And here I'm just saying something like framework. Framework. Okay, so here I'm adding something like Spring Boot. Uh, maybe something like Django. Here, something like ASP.NET MVC. I can create one more group for libraries, something called libraries. Here, I'm mentioning the options like React.js. jQuery, Bootstrap. Okay. Here I can just configure one more option that is Angular. So Angular comes under framework. 
React comes under libraries. Now, if I go back here, now see, I got here three groups. Programming languages, framework, libraries. So I can create like this, different, different groups in my dropdown and I can configure some options there. So how to create like these groups? Simply we have to add opt group, opt group, option groups, tag. And to give the label, we have to add label attribute. And inside this opt group, we have to configure our options. So like this, we can create multiple groups inside our select tag. So inside our select tag, we can create like this multiple groups. Okay. So which box you don't want, if you don't want this box, then just remove those all things using your CSS. So if you want to do any changes in these styles, then you have to do, you have to go with CSS. Okay. So here, this is how we create the drop down. We can create something called text area also. There is element called text area. Now using this text area element, we can ask user to enter some data which is related to some paragraph. Like uh, if user want to enter multiple lines, then in that case, we can go with text area. If user wants to add some data in the form of multiple lines, then we can go for text area. Like if you, if you are asking you uh, to the users to enter their address, then we can allow him to create, uh, we can create one text area and we can allow him to enter address in that text area. Or uh, if you want to ask some feedback in the form of some sentences, then again, you can go with this text area. So if I go back, I can create one text area. So here I can create one container. In that one H2 with text box. And here I can create one text box. Oh, sorry, text area, not text box. Okay, text area. Text area element. Okay, now for this text area element, we have to configure two attributes. One is rows and one more is calls. You have to tell in that text area how many columns you want. So if you add more columns, the width of your text area will increase. If you add rows, then the height of your text area will increase. Suppose if I say here 5 and here if I say 30. So it will create 30 columns, 5 rows. And it will be something like this. Now see, this is something like this. Okay, let me do one thing. Let me remove this container from here. So we got something like this. Now here, let me add some style. Text align, I will say center. Now see, this is the text area. Now, if you want, you can increase the height. If you want to increase the height, you have to just increase the number of rows. If I say 10, it will be like this. Now see height is increased. If you want to increase width, you have to just add number of columns. So if you say 50, here width will increase. So now here you can ask users to enter some data. Now he can enter some data here in multiple lines. Got it? How to create text area?
yes that's mandatory to maintain value option if you don't maintain value option then you will not get that suggestions right from where you will configure what values has to be shown so value attribute attribute is mandatory okay so this is how we create the text area now let's suppose i want to create text box and i want user to allow uh, i mean i want to allow user to enter only four characters or five characters i want to restrict number of characters in my text box let's suppose i want to create otp like this input box i want to create i i want i want to allow user to enter only four numbers here not more than four numbers okay so in that case uh, we can go with the attribute called anybody knows what is that attribute yes we have to go with something called max length so if i go back here so let me just create one input box okay here i am just entering number or here i, I will just add something like attribute max length here text if i go back here i got one text box now here i want user to enter only four characters so we can configure max length and we can say four now if i enter here 1 2 3 4 5 now see after four i am not able to enter anything i am trying but it is not allowing me to enter so you can restrict number of characters using this max length max length and if you want you can configure one size attribute and we, we can decrease the size of our input element now see here if i say 2 it is something like this if i say 4 it is something like this i can increase the size of my text box i can decrease the size of my text box using this size attribute now here if i say 20 it will be something like this which is default default size of your text box is 20 i can add here something like 50 it will increase the size of my text box in the same way i can decrease i got here okay it's like otp where you can allow user to to enter otp okay so max length size there is one more attribute called required suppose if you want user should enter some data here and he should submit that data he should submit that data then what we can do we can configure one attribute called required required means it's a mandatory text box you can make user to enter 
mandatorily the data inside this text box without entering any data he cannot submit he cannot submit this particular data so he cannot submit this input data as a empty so if he is clicking if he submit if, if he want to submit this data then he has to enter some something inside this text box so without entering anything if you click on the button it will give you one message please fill out this field you have to enter some data here if you enter some data and if you click on submit then it will submit that data so if you want to make certain field to be mandatory certain field to be mandatory then we will add this required attribute so required attribute is added or we will configure this required attribute to make certain input box mandatory to be entered now you might have seen in lot of forms right while filling the forms uh, there will be one star it means it is mandatory to enter that field so if you leave empty and if you try to submit that form then it will ask you to enter some data here it it will ask you to enter some data in that particular text box right without entering any data in that text box it will not allow you guys to submit that form so if you want to make any input element to be mandatory then we will add this required required attribute required attribute you can use any number of attributes you can use any number of attributes inside your input element okay now suppose you want to create input box where you want user to enter minimum minimum two characters or minimum five characters you want minimum characters should be entered then we can go for min length we can go for min length okay if i go back here if i add here min length if i am saying here two it means minimum two characters user need to enter if i type here one and if i try to submit now it will ask it will give me one message please length this text to two characters two or more it means minimum you have to enter two characters so if i enter here two characters then it will allow me to submit it will allow me to submit if you want to if you want your user should enter number of characters minimum number of characters then we go for this min length now if you want you can disable you can disable this text box if you want to disable this text box then we can add disable disabled attribute so this disabled attribute will disable your text box if you disable you cannot enter anything here see now here you cannot enter anything you cannot enter anything your text box got disabled so you have here disable in the same way there is one more attribute something called read only something called read only okay now if you make if you add this read only attribute then you will not be able to add any data here you cannot remove this existing data you cannot add new data also but this text box is not disabled if you add this read only then it will not allow you to add new data but it will not disable your text box if you see here it is not disabling your text box but still but still it is not allowing you to enter some new data here it will not allow you to enter new data so that is read only now again there is one very famous interview question what is the difference between 
disabled and read only attribute difference between disabled and read only attribute if you configure any one of the attribute then you will not be able to enter some data here if you add disable your text box is completely disabled you cannot enter anything if you make it read only still you will not be able to add any content then what is the difference what is the difference okay again you have to find the answer for this what is the difference between disabled and read only when to use disable when to use read only so sometimes in interviews they will ask can you explain me this scenario where i have to use disabled attribute can you explain me another scenario where i have to use read only attribute read only attribute so when you can answer this questions if you know the difference between disabled and read only if you know the difference between disabled and read only then only you will be able to answer so this one question i want you guys to find the answer and there is one more one more question right that is why e is allowed in input box whose type is number so i want you guys to find out the answer for these two questions remember whatever questions i am telling you guys to find out the answer all those questions are very 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 important in your interview point of view so lot of time in your interviews they will ask these questions okay so as of now all this error messages are handled by html but html can handle only few error messages okay html is providing us only some set of validations okay some set of validations if you want to provide your own custom validations if you want to create validations for another elements or for same elements with different messages then you have to use javascript then we can do that with the javascript okay so while learning javascript i will show you how to create client side validations so in javascript there is one concept called regular expression okay using this regular expressions we can create validations we can do client side validations html is providing only some set of validations but if you want to do complete validations for each and every element then we have to go with javascript there is no other option so we have to write our own code for the checking the validations so some of you guys uh, gave the answers for the difference between read only and disabled but still i want everybody to explore that question uh, i mean explore that topic and find out the answer for that questions okay there is uh, one more value i forgot to explain Uh, related to this input type something called reset and submit suppose yeah suppose if i take input type value as a reset remember reset input type as a reset so whenever i use reset what it will do it will create one reset button it will create one reset button now what is the functionality of that reset button means suppose if i create here multiple text boxes
if i enter some data here and if i click on reset now see all my data in the text box got removed so what your reset button will do it will empty it will empty all your input boxes it will empty all your input boxes now see here i am entering something here i am entering something now whenever you click on reset it will just empty it will just empty your input boxes in the same way you can create one more button called submit type value as a submit if you use type value as a submit it will create one button and on that button you will see the name as a submit and this submit button will allow us to submit the data to submit the data of this input elements to the server so using this submit button we can submit the data this data we can submit to the server so how to submit the data of your input element to the server that you will understand once we start with javascript so if you don't know javascript uh, it will be very difficult for you guys to understand the concept of submit okay so this submit concept we will understand once we work with the forms concept in javascript once we create forms how to access the data of all this input element how to submit that data to server all those things we will see once we start with javascript so there i will explain about this submit uh, submit uh, concept in the same way this form tag we are using this form tag right this form tag will take some attributes we have some set of attributes for this form tag attributes like action something like method and something like on submit we will learn about this attributes once we start in once we start javascript so whenever we, we will discuss the form concepts in javascript there i will explain about this attributes because here it doesn't make any sense of understanding this attributes so you can understand this attributes in much more better way once you understand some concepts of javascript and that to at the end of end end of javascript uh, we will understand about this attributes okay so now this is the form concept which i wanted to explain for you guys when it comes to html now there are so many values that we can configure for type attribute as i have told you there are so many values which you can configure for your type attribute so i have just created one pdf right in that i have mentioned so many values so you can just go through that okay yeah now here there are some concepts uh, which we can learn in better way once we know some concepts of javascript that is the reason i'm just uh, pend uh, keeping that concepts in pending so that we will try to understand in the javascript now if i explain a uh, lot of uh, like a lot of people will not understand everything will go out of your head so now what why to get confused so let's wait for some time let's get into a javascript then let's uh, explore all those topics yeah so that's all guys for today's session so we have done with the forms i think now you guys can create a registration form or sign up form you will be able to create login form or sign in form right so to create registration form or sign up form or login for or sign in form whatever we required whatever we required we have just learnt all those so there is one more type value as a file just you guys try just assign type value as a file and just check what kind of input box will be created 
type value equals to five. So you can add range also. You can add something called range also. Okay. Yeah. So in tomorrow's session, I will explain you about uh, mark you, mark you tag, uh, iframe, and HTML5 semantic tags. Now, once we have done with these topics, means we have done with HTML. Uh, okay. Here we will see how to add audio, how to add video, all those we will see in HTML5 semantic tags. Then again, we will move towards CSS. Now CSS will take around four to five sessions, four to five sessions on CSS. And with, within four to five session, I think we should be able to complete CSS topics. Then we can start with JavaScript. Okay. From basics, we will start and we will learn all the advanced concepts of JavaScript. Okay. JavaScript is most important technology for us when it comes to UI full stack, mon stack, mean stack, or maven stack, whatever stack you take, JavaScript is the most important technology without JavaScript you cannot build your web application. So such an important the JavaScript is. And this is the most easiest programming language available in the market. If you compare JavaScript with Java, JavaScript with C sharp or JavaScript with Scala, you compare any programming language with JavaScript. JavaScript is the most easiest language. Okay. And that you will come to know once we start with JavaScript, you will come to know how easy the JavaScript is. You just need to understand the concept. Once you understand the concept, the most easiest language you will find that is JavaScript. Yeah, that's all guys. Uh, remaining things we will explore in tomorrow's session.